What's going on guys? We are back tonight with another showcase video for you and let's go take a look at what we got. Shout out to Ewok General for helping me get a hold of this card for this video. Uh, so we're going to do an HOH deck. It's uh, kind of on the lines of Big Brother. You know, you went ahead of household and you get your own cool mansion like this, right? <laughs> so this card says, uh, when played, if this is the only Wonders of Construction card in your deck, your history cards with 70 or more base power, wherever they are, gain 18 until played. So basically going to stack a big fatty deck with uh, a bunch of history cards. And then uh, obviously some cards like boxing. So this is uh, going to be a boxing history deck. Uh, boxing says your cards with 70 or more base power, wherever they are, gain 14 until played. So nice little combo there. We've also got Yeti coming in with our cards, uh, seven or more base energy, get the plus 20. Uh, Tully Monster also cards with 70 or more base, get plus 22 until played. And then big fatties like Dark Web. So uh, this is going to give us hopefully that 15 permanent power on our cards with 60 or more base power. We've got Bonnie and Clyde coming in. Uh, when drawing all cards in your opponent's hand, lose four perm. And this card gains 20 perm. And if you're losing the round, repeat. Uh, Komodo Castle. When played, your opponent's cards in hand lose 18 this turn. It's a nice little beater there. Grim Reaper. Uh, opponent's card. One of your opponent's cards in hand is going to lose the 50 perm. We've got Jonah Ark. When drawn, a random card in your hand gains 55 until played. Uh, the bait. I don't know how you say this. The Bay Tapestry, when drawn your history cards, wherever they are, gain plus 10 until played, and this card burns 30. We've got El Dorado, a little extra energy here. I am getting, uh, this is a quite, of ex uh, quite expensive deck, so the energy definitely helps. We, we are rocking the crown jewel in this deck, so when returned, if you won the turn, your history cards, wherever they are, gain 30 in cost plus 3 for 3 turns, so that potential there for 270 power. Uh, if we, because we have so many history cards, there is a good chance we can get nine history cards down for those three turns. So that's quite a bit of power there, but it's expensive. Comes with that high cost. So cards like El Dorado are important, or uh, Easter Island statues get you that five energy on a pinch. Uh, what else? We had, yep, uh, Grog. When drawn, distribute this card's 100 evenly across the cards in your hand. So a nice way to get those cards even bigger. So like on a last turn of a game, that card, you're not going to play it. It's going to distribute its 100 power. So another another 75 on those last three cards is pretty strong. Uh, Liberty Bell, when played, gained 10 for 12 turns. A little power per turn there. Uh, Boston Tea Party, when drawn all cards in both players' hands, lose 16 perm. Whoever won the turn gets 80 next turn. So that's nice if you win. Emperor Yang, we're going to go even bigger here. Uh, so our cards with 6 or 7 base energy get that plus 10 until played. And then if they have 8 or more base energy, they're going to get plus 10 and cost plus 1 until played. I'm sorry, an additional plus 10 and cost plus 1. So nice buff there from Emperor Yang. And finally, we got Dead Drops. A random card in your hand gains 50 this turn. This card loses 50 this turn. So pretty strong deck, man. This deck can smack so i'm kind of impressed with this castle so far especially in this high energy week like this it's uh so far it's been pretty decent so let's go check it out and you guys can tell me what you think but um good time to say though if you guys do enjoy the content please hit that like button and that subscribe button uh we haven't been getting hardly any subscribers lately i don't know i don't know if i just fell off or what but uh, definitely would be nice to see you guys that watch my videos. Please hit that button. It definitely helps the channel. Uh, we like to grow around here, so that's always uh, always the hope, right? Keep growing this bad boy. All right, let's see what we got here. We got El Dorado on the rip, so probably play it because I don't want to risk running out of energy. Get that thing going. We don't want to, we don't want this card to burn up either in our hand, so we're gonna play it down. And I think I'm gonna go Yeti. It's kind of early. Yang could be could be problematic with uh, the energy at the moment. So let's do it like this. Looks like we're up against a science deck. A little Leonardo da Vinci going on. 
All right, we got our dark web, so we're definitely playing that. Try to get that down as early as possible. All right, we're going to start stacking a little bit of energy on the, on the reserve. So I want to do it like this. It's going to bank five for me. All right, he's got a little bit of a lead, but I don't think we're out of it yet. Let's see what we draw here. All right, I think I want to get boxing down, even though it's not the most power. So we could lose this turn, but I do want to get it going. I don't want to, I don't like to sit on the buffers. I like to get them played, get the deck rolling. So what do we want to talk about today? So, oh, so uh, while I was at lunch today, I was uh, <clears throat> messing around on, uh, no, actually it was, uh, so I was listening to, you guys know I love listening to Rogan, so I was listening to another Rogan podcast today, and they were talking about AI, and one of the things that made me, because he mentioned uh, AI songwriting, I guess, like how Kanye uh, or, or there was uh, some songs going around that people weren't sure if it was AI or if it was Kanye. So it made me want to look into like AI songwriting. So while I was at lunch, I I was scrolling my phone looking up uh, basically AI songwriting. Because for those that don't know, if you guys aren't aware, I have uh, I did write my own song. So it's on Spotify. It's uh, it's John Bunn is the artist. And then it, the song is uh, Through My Father's Eyes, for those interested. So I wrote my first song, right? I had it I had it done. So it's kind of got me the itch, though, to want to, like, keep trying songwriting more because I thought it was kind of neat. So uh, basically, anyway, I was like, oh, let me look up this AI songwriting thing because everybody's talking about it. So uh, I did that, and basically I plugged in, like, I have a, another song I've been kind of working on. It's kind of nostalgic and, like... It's country. I'm, I'm like, a, I'm a country guy. So, uh, I, uh, typed in like some, you only type in like keywords and like some sentences here and there up to like 30 characters, but you can do like 10 times. And then basically it takes all your, all your, basically your stuff that you've said. And then it, uh, tries to squeeze it into a song. And I mean, it pops a song out in like 30 seconds, not even probably. And uh, some of them aren't too bad. Like, I mean, they're they're definitely like rough. You can tell like it's it's not perfect by any means, but it gives you like some pretty good ideas to like work off of. I feel like like if I wanted to take one of the lines out of it and like re rework it around a little bit and then put it into one of my songs, it actually does spit out pretty cool ideas. So I was like, oh, I could definitely see in like the next ten years this thing like really taking off for songwriting. Um, potentially putting songwriters out of business, honestly, if it gets that good. I mean, you don't know how how good these things could potentially get in the future. So that's one of the things I wanted to ask you guys. What do you think as far as AI goes? Do you think it could put songwriting songwriters out of business? Because I've heard that it can even steal vocals from artists and then like basically sing like pull their words from other songs and use their voice to sing the song, which is crazy to think about. So in the future, in 10, let's say in 10 years, we could potentially be seeing the majority of the songs out there written by AI, sung by AI using vocals from famous artists that aren't even singing the songs anymore. They're just AIs like snipping and putting these things together. Like how crazy would that be? So do you guys think that's possible? Do you do you do you see that potentially happening in the future where artists and songwriters are almost obsolete by a certain point because of AI? I don't know. Personally, I feel like we could we could see that in 10 years. I think it's definitely possible with the technology that's out there. But we'll see. Ant's deck is smacking though. Whew. This ain't even close. Like I said, this deck can can put some power down early, too. I mean, that's round three putting 1,600 down. That's pretty strong. 
All right, let's do one more. See, uh, see if we get just as lucky or not. But yeah, it's definitely fun to think about what AI could potentially accomplish years down the line. I mean, I read another article today that was talking about uh, Bill Gates, and I guess every year he puts out a letter, kind of like Warren Buffett does, that talks about what he thinks in the upcoming year. And I was reading some of his uh, his highlights. On he talks about like climate change, and he talked about um, like medicine and the war in Ukraine and different things that I thought was pretty interesting for those that don't follow that kind of stuff. It's definitely worth checking out. A lot of good information there. Uh, one of his key things is like, is if he could change like anything in the world at, at, at the moment. Uh, he always says malnutrition. I thought that was kind of neat that uh, he thinks that uh, obviously different countries and people out there are, are malnutritioned and, and really could use the help. So, with medicine and science moving forward to, to be able to get that, uh, what they're lacking there. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I don't know. It's curious, curious to see what comes of, uh, some of these things in the future. All right. We do have our crown jewel. Do we think we can win this turn? I think we can. Let's, let's ding him here. Let's go. Let's go grim. Hopefully it hits one of those cards in it that he's playing right now. There we go. Dinged his hammerhead. All right, so we are going to get our crown jewel trigger. So it's going to be expensive. The cards are going to be expensive for three turns. We do have 16 in the bank, which is nice. Oh, so the same podcast, the, the Rogan podcast I was listening to, one of the other things that they brought up, which I thought was crazy, I didn't, I didn't realize this. I don't know if you guys or any of you guys out there are conspiracy lovers like myself, but uh, they mentioned that Canada specifically, I guess there was a huge dip in life expectancy starting in like the year 2020, and it was like a almost like a three percent light, like basically the age you die, like the average age that they die, like. I want to say it was like maybe up around like 77 years old and then it's dipped down like 3% or something crazy. Well, after he mentioned that, I was like, oh, I wonder what the U.S. is. And I looked, oh my goodness, the U.S. has dipped dramatically. It, it's been since like the eight, the 70s and the 80s, it's literally been like steady in, increase in our life expectancy as medicine and as technology improves, you just see our humans' life ex expectancy in the U.S. steadily climbing, steadily climbing. But then 2020 hits, huge dip. I'm talking like several years shaved off humans' lives. Why is that? That's what I, I'm like, what caused that? I have my conspiracy theories of what caused it. But I want to pose the question to you guys. What could cause... Out of nowhere, such a drastic dip, conveniently around the year 2020. What did we see happen in the year 2020? You guys know. Come on. Everybody knows. <laughs> COVID. So what did they do? What did they force on Americans? They forced a vaccine on us. Or attempted to, for the most part, right? So could that be the cause? I don't know. I'm posing the question, but it's definitely likely. I don't I mean, I don't know for sure. Honestly, I have no idea. But I mean, what else could have done it? It was steady. It, you guys need to look that graph up. It is crazy to see this massive dip. There's and it's funny because other countries didn't dip. They kept consistently staying going higher. So other countries, it says are like 80 years old. And I think we were down six years lower as Americans from other countries. Six years. That is huge. Imagine losing six years of your life just because you're American. <laughs> like what? <laughs> I want to know why. Is it on purpose? Huh? I don't know. That'd be something crazy right there. Some type of population control. I don't know. Definitely makes you go, hmm. 
Well, our opponent just smacked us good at the worst time when we played Crown Jewels, huh? That was very unfortunate. Let's see if he can finally win one, though. I'm going to play Dark Web here just because we are behind. I don't want to um, not get the buff if we do lose this round. This is an Oceans and Seas round, so it's not surprising we're losing it. <coughs> he just played his big boys, too. We actually have a shot here, I feel like. What if we just play our max? Is that enough? Almost. I think he got us, but man, that was close. We about come back and stole her. We have 1,400. That's pretty good round three for him. But can he keep it up? I don't think he can. My deck seems to be able to keep it up. I'm going to play Yang. And let's do Yeti. Let's get the buffers down. See if we can burn up some of this extra energy. We're going to start behind again, but that's okay. I was rocking Holy Grail. Interesting. Interesting. He's, he's doing pretty good keeping up with me. I actually thought he was going to struggle a little more. I, I've been stomping the shark decks. I think I played like three of them already with this deck. And I haven't lost one yet. All right, so here's where he played his big turn. So I'm probably going to lose this. So I don't want to play crown. I'm actually just going to kind of get rid of our lower cards. Well, not really. They're all kind of decent, but I'm going to save crown here, I think. See if we can get that next one. Yeah, he's definitely keeping up with us nicely. Really didn't expect it after the other shark decks I played against, but this one's definitely a little better. He's got that uh, Holy Grail in there. Hmm. Alright, let's do, uh, do it like this. I want to get that dark web buff here. Ooh, he's got a nice jump, though. That's scary. Scary, scary. He might get us. Don't think I can play Crown Jewels now. I think it's too late. I think we just got to go go with our max. Try to catch up. See if we can take the wing wings out of its sails, huh? All right, we took the lead. Let's draw good here. Let's draw good. There we go. That was a good draw. Let's see, 643 and 648. So we're going like that. I think we pulled it out. Like I said, this deck smacks. Not too shabby. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching. Again, please hit that like button and that subscribe button. And have a good night, guys. Thanks again.